We're here today on the farm of Ollie Walsh up near Tubbercurry in Sligo uh, with Trisha Kennedy on camera. The purpose of the mission today is really to demonstrate how to make a halter and how important it is to, to do it correctly. So we get at it right away. Really the nose band is the important piece and we want it to end up to sit halfway between the eye and the nose and to come around 60% of the circumference here with 40% behind. If it's too small, if the nose band is too small, there are a number of things that will happen. First of all, the rope coming down the sides will be too close to the eyes. And the second thing is, we'll end up, it'll only end up sitting above their nose or whatever. If that happens, it, it'll tend to open at the bottom and they'll get it off over the nose. Effectively, your halter is like a steering wheel. It's your way of controlling and directing the animal as such. So it's very important that it's made right fitted right and suits the purpose for which it's intended. The other thing to remember is, I suppose, just a simple guide. If you're looking at baby calves, and by that I mean up to three months of age, a six inch nose band about 15 centimetres. If you're looking at weanlands, uh, six to 12 months old, you're looking at something like eight to 10 inches, maybe 20 centimetres. If there's this kind of beast, you'll normally be you know, looking like more between 10 and 12. And if it's an adult animal like a cow, uh, you'll probably want 12 to 14 inches and certainly 14, 15 for a mature bull as such. So that's really the driver. It's about getting this piece right and as you'll see later, everything else falls into place from there. So we'll start here now, uh, which we have taken about three meters of rope. Usually three good arm lengths is what you need to make a halter. And the first thing you should do is to seal one end completely. And to do that, we simply use a cigarette lighter, like that, just to seal the end of it. Uh, the last thing you want here is a knot, uh, because it can be too hard to get through loops. On the other end, I would split them to three strands and just seal each of them separately, uh, as such. And when you have them sealed and they're hot, just use a little bit of water to actually cool them so that you can handle them. Our next step then is to take one strand off the other two as such. Central bit of advice, make sure it's big enough. It's no problem to cut off a little after if you have too much, but it's, you can't put it back on. So make sure it's big enough. So really what we're doing here is going to split this rope, split out one, just one strand, make, make a space, and put the two strands back in through that loop here, where the two are together and pull it right through uh, to squeeze it tight as such. So we're squeezing that loop right here, right in, so that we can just about get the small finger peeping through here. We'll be feeding the rope back through that later on. Then we'll take our single strand and bring it around the bottom, so that we have two enclosed here between the two parts of the rope. And when we take our single strand, what we're going to do is to fit it back into the, our original. And keep a little pull on it as you do that, if you don't, when you get to the front, you'll discover you left it a little bit short. Um, so wind it back into place, basically. So we already have our loop here. Our next piece is to decide um, you know, how we're going to make this, this uh, loop over here. This is effectively going to be a closed loop as such. So I'm going to make this loop and feed it back through itself as such. Um, that, that's our objective. Um, in the ideal world, if this one is pointing this way, start the loop in pointing in the same direction. It will make it easier to work as such. As you can see here, this is what we're making a loop for the rope to go back through. So we have, we're going to split the three of them now and feed them back separately, rather than actually the two and the one like I had on the other side. Um, so as I said, there's no major signs here. You just work them back through as such until we close the loop and um, as neat as you can. If you just make a knot, all that happens is um, it's uncomfortable for the animal, it's uncomfortable to work with, and, and, and so on. Now we don't have to have them all at equal distances gone back through the rope. Uh, that actually doesn't matter as such because we want to seal them in different places. I'm going to cut off these pieces and reseal them as such. We're just going to reseal them back into the, um, into the halter itself. A majorly technical exercise as such. So we're just using the um, cigarette lighter here again to just to burn them back and tidy it up. And again, remember it'll be hot, so we just use the drop of water here. When you look at it here, 
Your first step is to feed down the one that's going over the head. The right side of the animal, just twist it through there. And then when you're feeding it back through the closed loop, that will be feeding on its left side. This will be on its left side, this one. So when we're pulling, we're pulling purely on the bottom jaw. This part will always be closing on the bottom jaw. That's the crucial part. So there's only one fixed piece, and the fixed piece is across the nose band. Everything else moves to, to fit the animal as such. Now, so my advice is if you find the rope hard to work with and you'd like to soften it, give it a run through the washing machine at about 60 plus degrees, or indeed uh, if you put it into boiling water. And that's your halter basically made. An important part of doing anything with cattle is actually health and safety. And uh, you know, you might have seen us using a lighter there a few moments ago. If you're near hay or straw or whatever, just be careful with things like that. Go to a safe place. The same issues apply when you're actually tying up the cattle themselves. My strong recommendation for tying cattle is to use one of these bars to a wall uh, so that they'll tie simply to the ring. So that, um, not to bars, not to the side of a crush, uh, not where they can get over it, under it, legs through it. All of that poses risk to injury. Uh, in the ideal world, you know, if you take a standard hay barn or pen with a wall, if you had two to three per pen with two or three rings in the wall, uh, roll out the straw under them, uh, that is the ideal scenario. In terms of recommendation, I'd like to have those just at about what the animal's natural neck level would be, or a little below actually, might even be safer. In terms of rope from the jaw to the wall, uh, when they're tied up first, something like 12, maximum 18 inches. The idea is that they can get up and lie down, but they do not have enough rope to go out over another animal. They do not have enough rope to get in around and over themselves and wrap themselves up in it. So a ring in a wall is the ideal scenario and um, uh, you know, keep safety in mind. Keep, remember you have to get in to release them yourselves and uh, so on and so forth. And we'll show you in a few moments how to make uh, the proper tie up knots uh, that can be released easily. <music>